Hello. Is it working? Yes, it is working. Uh, happy time. Happy time. Um, hello. Um, let's have something green. Maybe. Right. Hello. Welcome to Shaky Burn Slow Reading with Muffy, Commanda James, Margot. Some flowers today. Well, that's not real flowers, but that's a real tree. Oops. Because it's springtime. And we love it when it's springtime, don't we? Oh yeah, I love spring. I love spring too. Oh, it doesn't really look like spring just now with all the snow. Um, what is it today? Uh, minus five, I think. Oh yeah, and minus five. No, that's normal, that's March. Okay, today we have uh, the song of the happy shepherd. Well, because we love to be happy by William Butler Yeats, who is, uh, of course, a very famous guy. So let's read it without further ado. Read with me, read it aloud, and uh, just try to feel the melody or, well, how it sounds. Is it easy to say? How do you feel when you speak it? Because it's very important, it's music. The ruins of Arcady are dead, and over is their antique joy. Of all the world of dreaming fed, great truth is now her painted toy. Yet still she turns her restless head, but all oh, sick children of the world, of all the many changing things in dreary dancing past us world. To the cracked tune that Cronus sings, words alone are certain good. Where are now the warring kings? Ward be mockers by the rood. Where are now the warring kings? An idle ward is now their glory, by the stammering schoolboy said reading some entangled story. The kings of the old time are dead. The wanderer herself may be only a sudden flaming ward, in clanging space a moment heard, troubling the endless reverie. The nowise worshipped dusty deeds, nor seek, for this is also sooth, to hunger fiercely after truth. Lest all thy toiling only breeds new dreams, new dreams. There is no truth, saving in thine own heart. Seek them, no learning from the starry man, who follow with the optic glass the whirling ways of stars that pass. Seek them, for this is also sooth. No word of theirs. The cold star bane has cloven and rent their hearts in twain, and that is all the human truth. Go gather by the humming sea some twisted echo harboring shell, and to its lips thy story tell, and they thy comforters will be, rewarding, rewarding in melodious guile thy fretful words a little while. Till so they shall sink and fade in roof and die a pearly brotherhood. For worlds alone, words alone are certain good. Sing them. <clears throat> For this is also so. I must be gone. There is a grave where daffodil and lily wave. And I would please the hapless fawn buried under the sleepy ground with mirthful songs before the dawn. His shouting days with mirth were crowned, and still I dream he treads alone, walking ghostly in the dew, pierced by my blood sinking through. My songs of old earth's dreamy youth. Ah, she dreams not now, dream thou, for fair poppies on the brow, dream, dream, for this is also sooth. Oh, fantastic. 
I like it. I like it. So tell me, how do you feel about it? Uh, I didn't understand it. It's very strange. A lot of funny words in it. Uh, ever heard the word dictionary? Well, dictionary can only tell you that much, can't it? Well, true. Okay, so this poem uh, is on one hand a separate poem. At the same time, it uh, he used it a couple of times as a prologue. In which case it was a, 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 a satyr or a poem, he was reading it. So, as he uh, used it a few times, obviously it was important to eat. And why? And uh, how do we feel about it? And what is going on here? So let us see. Let us see. It's a long poem, so uh, maybe we will not... Uh, uh, look at each every word, but uh, we will go through it, see, see what happens. So, you never know what's going to happen. You never, never know where the poem is going to take you. So, the song of the happy shepherd. And uh, you look at the title, and what do you expect to read? Tell me. What do you expect to read? Something happy? Something pastoral? Yes, yeah, something happy, something pastoral? Uh, because it's a song and we have the word happy and we have the word shepherd, which is like okay, a guy from the countryside who is happy. He, um, the first line, and the first line it gets you just the opposite. So inside you get ready for a specific experience. Yeah, or something light, pleasant, lyrical, in a happy way. And the first words are the woods of Arcadia are dead. And over is the romantic joy. It's like what? What? You promised us a song of a happy shepherd, and Arcade, in case you don't know, is just uh, that. It's uh, the land of happy shepherds. And he says it's dead. He says all happy shepherds, uh, their reality, Arcade, is dead. You see what he does? Immediately, it's like, pooh! We relax, we open up, we are uh, kind of uh, uh, defenseless. We are not ready for the blow. And that's a big blow because in the first line there's a very strong word, the words, dead. Yeah, so it, it strikes right home because we are open. We don't expect the blow. So it hits us. The roots of Arcadia are dead and over in their antique joy. So uh, what is it? Well, um, he says you can't really be as happy as uh, the people of the ancient world. Uh, I, I don't mean uh, historically because... Uh, but uh, I, I mean... Oops, I mean, uh, in culture, in, in, in liturgy as a symbol, because it's a very old idea that uh, uh, as you go back and back in history, people get happier and happier, because no one is ever happy in their own time, which is a bit stupid. And uh, so he says, yes, uh, but uh, we can't repeat it, we can't just bring it back. Because so some people think, okay, uh, if we just uh, could restore uh, that uh, ancient time, the ancient uh, traditions, we'll be happy today. If we just brought, what? I'm not good at it. Uh, uh, if we brought just uh, the Soviet Union back to Russia, for instance, oh, we'll all be happy. Or um, 
if we came back to the ways of uh, ancient Greece or even Egypt or Sumerian ways, ways uh, then we'd be happy. But it doesn't work that way. And that's what he says here, apparently, uh, that uh, no, maybe they were happy, but now it's uh, out of question. We can't just copy it because we are different now. The world is different now. We need to seek new ways. If you just try to copy the old ways, even if they are beautiful, you'll be dead. Because they're dead. You need to... Uh, <laughs> what? Well, you, you need to bring them back to life, but in your own way. So you don't copy it, but uh, you, you can connect with it, maybe. No? No? Yeah, maybe. Over is their antique joy. Of old, the world on dreaming fed, great truth is now her painted toy. Wow, I like it. I like it. Ah, so, um, excuse me for being uh, oh, a bit talkative. Well, that's all right, that's why we're here to talk. Well, uh, we have this here. Uh, the idea of uh, dreams being the main source of energy, uh, the, the uh, heart of the paradigm of reality, dream. Uh, and uh, then we have truth. And uh, here they are posed, uh, dreams and truth are posed as uh, maybe... Um, fantasy and uh, logic rhyme and reason yeah like li uh, light no rhyme and reason and uh, he says before it was rhyme or dream and now it is truth and uh, what is his position we may uh, or may not agree but what is his position can you tell me what does he think about it Tell me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. So he thinks that dreaming was a good idea. Maybe uh, it uh, doesn't really work now, but uh, we uh, forgot about it completely, and that was a big mistake because truth, he says, truth on one hand, uh, of course, we love truth, we love when things are true. Uh, no, not always, not all peoples, you know. Um, okay, but uh, we, we don't like when people lie to us, I guess. Oh, well, okay, not, not everyone. But anyway, truth is, is good. Okay, agreed. But he says truth is grey. And it's painted. And it's a toy. Oh, too much, too much, too clever. Oh, oh, come on, come on, don't be so serious about it. Yeah, so great truth is not her painted toy, her the worlds. That is a very important message and you can just uh, a pause and slow down and think about it for for an hour or a day or a week or a year there's a lot a lot is said in, in this little line so truth is gray why does he say that truth is gray um, maybe we'll uh, look through the whole poem maybe we'll look at a part of the poem and uh, finish it next time or we'll see how it goes We'll see how it goes. Uh, so, uh, he says grey. Uh, grey is... Uh, grey means it's not bright. Colourless. Well, is it good or bad if you say the truth is grey? Well, it depends on how you look at it. So, uh, on one hand, if you say truth is grey, uh, then grey in our understanding is like boring. It doesn't have any interesting colour. I like grey. I, I prefer to call it silver. Look, I'm not grey, I'm silver, see? 
never called me gray. So there's nothing wrong with grayness. But uh, of course, of course, if you say yeah, he's like a, a gray, it's like lacking personality, maybe. But, yeah. But if you look, uh, for instance, at the Eastern philosophy, like in China, then in that case, gray is actually good. Really? How so? Well, gray is neither black nor white, and, and it's not any uh, color. Well, gray is a color. Well, you know what I mean. Uh, it's, uh, so it's not contaminated. Oh, ah, so if you say the truth is gray, then in what you might be uh, saying here, not that it's boring, but that it is impersonal, ah, so if a dream is uh, blue, it's only good for uh, interesting uh, for blue people. If a dream is green, it's only working for green people. If a dream is red, it only works for red people and green people will not like it. But truth is universal. Truth is gray. Oh, that is clever. I know, I'm very clever. Believe it or not. Oh, oh. Okay, but here a truth with a capital T, let's see, truth is only a toy, a painted toy. Yeah, like we had a painted queen in uh, Shakespeare in Richard III, meaning not real again, painted toy. So they say on one hand truth is big, we use a capital letter but uh, we don't know how to use it. We decided to use, to favor, uh, to favor truth over dreams, but we don't really know how to use it, so in the end it's just a painted toy for us, rather than um, a friend or a teacher or whatever. Ooh. Oh, and gray is like gray hand of time, I imagine. So, um, truth is related to death, maybe. Or it's timeless, eternal, uh, gray, it belongs to, I don't know. It, it doesn't originate in the human world, because the big truth, um, well, it includes the human world. Maybe that's why it's great. Oh, I don't know, but it's a beautiful line. Great truth is now her painted toy. Oh, it's a toy. It's not a way of living, it's just a toy. Oh. So we have this uh, perspective, and uh, immediately we talk on the uh, galactic scales. We talk about all world and the whole history. Ooh, of all the world I'm dreaming that where truth is now her painted toy. Yet still she turns her restless head. Uh, so uh, we still need uh, both of them, truth and dream. So here, interestingly, Interestingly here, uh, the world is a character and it's a uh, she. And it's like uh, a person that's growing. So first we talk about feeding on dreams. And uh, you can think about a baby who only seems to be dreaming and feeding and dreaming and feeding and dreaming and feeding again. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. And then uh, the child, uh, the baby grows up into a child and now uh, this child needs uh, toys to play. 
and just eating and dreaming is not enough you discover the world and how do you do it you discover your truth yet still she turns her restless head well yeah you're still you're still very curious you don't want only facts you want more than facts you want a uh, reality reality is more than so-called facts there aren't that many facts in our lives really if you come to think about it if you stop to check it out yeah you'd be surprised how little we know how very very little <sighs> i know the feeling but all oh, sick children of the world so he says it's a sickness he says it's a sickness to say that no we don't need dreams we only need facts and we'll be playing with them uh, we can paint them up to pretend uh, they are bright and different and interesting but beneath that you just scrap it a little bit and beneath that it's grey we all have our grey truths and we all paint our truths in different colours but really beneath that it's all the same uh, what is the paint? what is the paint? can you tell me? oh, good idea well they say uh, paint is how we see the reality and how we see ourselves it's our consciousness maybe? maybe? yeah, maybe Great truth. What is great truth? Well, the only truth is, is, is that the, oh, we all die in the end. But what happens next? No one knows. Oh, sick children of the world. At first, we don't like being called children. Well, m most people don't like being children. They uh, like being called grown-ups. Big and serious and responsible. But to him, we are still children, we are still growing, and uh, we are sick, we don't know what to do. Of all the many changing things in dreary dancing past us world, to the cracked tune that Cronus sings, wars alone a certain good. Oh, that was clever. Let's have a look, let's try to see what is he saying here. He says, uh, the world moves fast, and we have time, Kronos. And uh, his tune is cracked, because in time all things break down and crack. And things change, and uh, j just, just, just try to, to feel the energy of what he says. Oh, the many changing things in dreary dancing past us world. Many changing things world past us in dreary dancing to the cracked tune of Kronos. If you put it in a normal order. But uh, he inverts the order because it's a crazy whirling motion. It's not going in a straight line. It's uh, mad. It's... Uh, <sighs> And you can feel it in, 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 this, uh, broken, in the broken lines, in the broken connections. Many changing things and dreary dancing past us, verb, the crack to the cross sings. So we had great truth, which is in, in a way, in some way related to time and death, the word great. And now we have Kronos. Now we have Kronos. There is also time and death because Kronos or time eats his children. Time is eating his children all the time. Time uh, births us. Time brings us here to this reality. But a time is what uh, or who kills us in the end. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, that's Kronos. So what he says here, things or facts change but words are good 
all that remains of people m more more than other things is words He's, he doesn't say uh, words are the ultimate answer to life the universe and everything but he says he says well if you have to choose then you should bet on words that's where your bet should go because well, we, we all know he's not the first to think about it. He's far not the first to think about it. Uh, a pyramid may tumble, just, uh, you know, uh, go down eventually. So, a stone can crumble to dust eventually. Something can happen to it. If, if you are a king, he says next, then who cares who remembers you if you're a musician uh, if you're a, a general who needs you who cares but words or rather story it doesn't have to be words as such but story leaves on mm, yeah so uh, we may not know the author, or there might not be one author, but we we know the stories, and we tell them, and retell them. Oh, that's what we like to believe, because some of them were nearly extinct, and uh, many stories are extinct, just we don't know about it because they're extinct in many cultures, because there are so many or used to be so many languages and cultures going away and uh, well that's natural I, I, I assume yeah. so he says oh he 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 oh you, you tell them I, I'm too excited I'm too excited okay let me tell you so what he does here he applies very strong medicine just he gets us relaxed by uh, uh, naming the, the, the poem, the song of a happy shepherd. And then he injects, uh, he bits us on the head. He gives us a big smack, smack, smack. He takes us and he just throws us into this great chaos. He starts with the death, the war, roots of Arcadia are dead. And then he talks about sick children of the world. And uh, he's, he puts us into this viral pool of time. A big time time, if you know what I mean. So he doesn't speak of anything small. He doesn't talk about something little. He talks about something big. And uh, that's uh, what we need to feel here, or supposed to feel here, or what we feel here. Uh, how a man, or a woman, how uh, a man or a woman uh, is a person. Yeah, okay, a person. How a person is so tiny and helpless, or... In, in face of uh, history. How on one hand we are all, of course, important and our lives are important, but at the same time the great tide of time. How? How can you stand it? What are you going to do? How are you going to survive it? If you care, maybe you don't care. Yeah, maybe you don't care. So he says, uh, your hope, your only hope, again, it's not an absolute hope, but your only hope is words. And then, of course, he elaborates it a little bit. Where are now the warring kings, word be mockers? By the root, where are now the warring kings? Uh, what is by the root, by the cross? In the, in, by God. Ah. Okay, so he puts different cultures together. He starts with Arcadia, which is like um, a reference to ancient Greece. 
and now he brings in uh, Christianity by saying by the rood. Interesting. So Akkadian Kronos are from another culture, and rood is from our culture, but maybe is it related to rude, like not polite? Mm, I'm not sure, I don't think so, really. Okay. So, he says, uh, people believe in action, and people don't believe in words. The kings say, uh, I'll conquer the universe, uh, usually meaning uh, neighboring regions of this planet yeah well, i'll conquer all i can conquer and then people will remember me forever because i'm so cool and amazing and who cares what you write there who needs it it's stupid and he says and where are they now who remembers them there's so many uh, kings and can you name like uh, ten kings of old? Five? Uh, well, I uh, maybe I can name a few, but they will be like from the Bible again, from the book, from word. How do you? How else would you know about them? Yes, how else would you know about them if not from history books? from uh, some manuscripts of the time who would know their names and deeds oh dear then again uh, let's be honest uh, we don't know all the kings we know some kings maybe but we certainly don't know all people who write because not everyone who writes is a writer let's be honest and not everyone who tells a story is a storyteller yeah but we know the best of the best, uh, precisely because they are the best, so they survive it. They're masters. Okay. An idle word is now their glory. By the stammering schoolboy said, reading some entangled story. Oh, oh, oh. He's a bit uh, upset. So we repeat the word word a lot in this uh, poem because uh, it's a, a kind of what he has to say about his uh, literally style really but also about what he thinks uh, of, of the world and where we are going and how the things are so we he says uh, world 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 then turns into word. Words alone are certain good. Uh, kings are word mockers. And now an idle word is their glory. So uh, uh, imagine there's a great king of the past. He's risking his life, he's making his plots, he's leading his armies. He he rules half the globe. This empire or that empire, he's so ever, really ever so cool. Oh, he thinks he is. And where is he now? Who thinks about him? A stammering schoolboy, not just a, 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 not a scholar, not a student, but a stammering schoolboy. What humiliation, really. Reading some entangled story. Um, so they become fiction. But that's how we all live. We, um, well, it's really hard, technically, technically, not, not uh, mentally, maybe, but uh, even just technically, to live in uh, re real reality. We live in fiction. What I mean, when you do something, when you meet someone, when you see something, uh, what it is and what you see is different. How you interact with it, you don't interact with it, 
you interact with reality by proxy. The proxy is the image you create, the way you explain it to yourself. Because well, reality is infinite and our brains are very much finite. So we need somehow to deal with infinity by using a finite tool. Obviously we need to convert it somehow to make it a bit more comprehensible. Obviously. Okay? And so we turn the world into fiction and then we can deal with that fiction we've just created. Okay? So uh, that's a, a good example with the kings. What do you know about the king? Only a tiny little bit of a fraction of who he was, what he's done, or his achievements and uh, his life. Just a few words. Uh, and uh, maybe they're not even true. Maybe it's just uh, a story. Story. Again, we don't talk about the real king. I, I don't know, like uh, The War and Peace is a very good example because you read it and that's how people imagine the events. Not from a history book, not from uh, some facts, but from a book of fiction because it's so much more lifelike than facts. And uh, that is what the poem says, too, that uh, facts are very good, but uh, they're not very much uh, uh, lively. And we are alive, so we need something more than just facts. Okay. Uh, the kings of the old time are dead. So, again, he repeats the word dead. Uh, Arcady or the old happy way of living is uh, dead. You can't bring it back. The kings of old are dead too. And not just in the sense they are dead as people because it was a long time ago and of course they're not alive now. But uh, dead in the sense um, of story too. In the sense that no one is interested in, in like a, a language is dead because no one is interested in that language. The kings of the old time are dead. It's a dead end. No one's interested. End of story. And again, uh, he repeats, old time, old time, and all that is connected with the old time is dead. But still, he says, maybe we shouldn't uh, throw it away completely. Maybe we should uh, just uh, learn a lesson or two from it. The wandering earth herself may be only a sudden flaming word, a kind of space a moment heard, troubling the endless reverie. Oh, nice, nice. So uh, he says, um, again, he starts with a big picture, Arcady, which is more than a country, it's a reality, a way of reality. Uh, then he kind of makes it bigger, he extends it to our time. Uh, you can see how he extends it. He, he throws a, a line, uh, like a lifeline, uh, which connects uh, the kings of old and Arcady and our reality today by the stammering schoolboy said. The stammering schoolboy exists Today, not in the past or future, today, now. And now he says it's not just uh, one part of reality, one part of uh, the planet. It's our all reality. Today and yesterday, here, there, the wandering earth herself, whole earth. And again, the earth is called wandering. Uh, the same as uh, things are changing and dancing and uh, whirling past. Uh, the same is uh, our planet itself. Or herself. Herself. 
Mm-hmm. He says, uh, by saying wandering uh, on one hand, again, again, look what he does. He's so amazing. He's so amazing. Uh, but, but it's more of your subject, uh, Commander James. Uh, you are the space pilot, not me. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, let me tell you, let me tell you. So, he says, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> right, now, he brings here the subject of the wandering earth. Uh, interestingly, here it's a uh, small e, earth. And uh, he connects earth by the word wandering. On one hand, again, we have lots of hands today. On one hand, he connects it with uh, things which uh, come and go, like summer clouds. Oh, I like summer clouds. <sighs> Haven't seen a summer cloud since summer. Duh. Oh, it's been a long time, you know. Oh, I know. I know. Mm. No, no summer clouds. <sighs> but back to, to the business. So he says wandering in the sense that Earth herself, now it's here, next moment it will be gone. And again, uh, here you, you feel this cosmic fright. Uh, uh, I know, you feel the scales of your being. Who are you? In this great uh, music of the spheres, what is your melody? What is your sound in it? It all uh, kings come and go. Okay, that is accepted. Uh, civilizations like Arcadic come and go. Okay, that happens. But now he, he makes it big. He says, but uh, the whole planet, the planet is not forever. Now it's here, next second, next moment, it disappears. He, what he does here in this Happy Shepherd song, he, um, he tries to uh, call infinity into the game. Or maybe he not, no, not try, does it? He invites you to look at infinity, to meet infinity, and to see that, oh, uh, yeah, you are finite, and uh, you die soon, and uh, nothing is big in face of infinity. Infinity being infinite, any number is uh, nothing, literally nothing, when compared to infinity. It, it looks big to us, but it's nothing to infinity. So that's what he says here, that uh, the Earth may be just a word, heard one moment, and then disappearing. Troubling, the endless river. But I was saying, I was saying, as a space pilot, uh, he talks about wandering Earth, and uh, then he talks about uh, astronomy and learning and science. So that's a very amazing bridge, like in music, a bridge, uh, which connects the first part, which uh, it talks about the mythical, mythological space and time, and which connects it to the next part, which is about uh, science, logic, fact side. You see, Wonder Nerve belongs there and there. A very, very good bridge. <clears throat> okay, I, I guess I've finished. Ooh, so, uh, that's a very turbulent poem. If you read it attentively, if you connect to it if you try to feel it that it's a very very turbulent poem Ooh. so uh, our planet our whole reality our whole existence we can't even imagine it but he says well to infinity 
It's just uh, one word lost in this great, uh, great noise or melody. No, 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 don't be so sad. It's not a noise, it's a melody. Yeah, or it's like one single note in, in a big melody. We can't even imagine it. Uh, um, oh, it, it, do you know Wagner? Uh, Wagner, the, uh, uh, the, the, the composer, you know, his big, big uh, project, the, the ring. So imagine one note played by one instrument in the orchestra uh, taken out of this whole big opera. It's an opera, isn't it? And that's our all reality, our all existence, and we exist within this one sound of one instrument in the orchestra in the context of the, this big, big, big cosmic opera. Galileo! 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 Ma, 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 ma. Not funny. I was serious. No, oh, I like serious. Been to it once or twice. Oh, how do you talk to him? Right. So that was the first part. Now we move to the second part. So the poem has three parts. Let's see, you can see it. it has three parts. That was part one we just read, part two, which is even a bit bigger, and part three, which is a bit shorter. And um, what is the connection between them? Uh, again, uh, it's uh, quite uh, classical. We have one side, we talk about old time and how it is dead now, and how words are important. And then, uh, next part talks about uh, science, and the other side, what to do, what not to do. Some more. Uh, elaboration and then uh, the final part is a conclusion which gets uh, personal rather than abstract but we'll get to it uh, eventually hopefully okay then no wise worship dusty deeds nor seek for this is also sooth to hunger fiercely after truth so uh, he says here Okay, deeds are dusty. The kings uh, thought that deeds are the uh, salvation. They were wrong. No one cares about their deeds. For most of them. For most of them. And he says, um, truth. What is truth? Who needs truth? Truth is infinite. Truth is infinite, so uh, there's no point in seeking fiercely after truth. So you can't eat it. It's it's too much for you. It will be too much. You'll never get it. Just technically, not because you're a stupid. No, you may be very very clever. You may be uh, very spiritual, but. That's infinity, my friend. That's infinity. You can only meet infinity with infinity. He says, Lest all thy toiling only breed new dreams, new dreams. There is no truth saving in thine own heart. In other words, uh, the, the, the more you try to do it it's like just a wild goose of what do they say trying to catch a wild goose wild goose chase <sighs> he might be clever he might be a pilot but he doesn't know much about geese so what i don't uh, hunger fiercely after truth you see 
So it's a wild goose chase. You think you seek the truth or logic or reason, whatever you call it. But in reality, all you get is only more dreams. It's very, very, again, very clever and very interesting. Just stop to think about it. Give it a, a moment. Give it a moment. We think that th we think. That's uh, what we think. It's not what is true, but that's what we think. We think there is truth or logic and it's somehow opposed to a fantasy or dream or um, well it's not a fantasy or dream in the sense it's not real uh, it's more in the sense it's not uh, that uh, straightforward maybe or we can't prove it or we don't seek to prove it uh, rhyme in one word rhyme and reason okay feelings maybe and uh, the more we seek after what we think is reason or truth or fact, the more we go into dreams because truth is never really available because it's infinite. And we, like uh, Commander James said, was it you? Oh, I think it was me. I uh, said, we never, uh, uh, ever, never, ever, uh, we never ever ever never I forgot ah you meant we never connect directly with the world or absolute truth we uh, act through dreams images images words languaging yeah we language reality we edit reality so uh, how if you are dealing with the edited reality how can you get the truth you cannot get your edited truth if you deal with image of reality an image of reality will only give you an image of the truth right 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 yes 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 thank you come on the jakes you're so clever oh thank you just don't mention it okay. and so <clears throat> thy toiling only breeds new dreams new dreams you think you go one way in fact you're going in a complete opposite direction and the one you probably think you despise so all our science so-called science most of it is dreams in the sense it's uh, an image it's it's not real the theories which are mainly just theories nothing is nothing much is proven so um, the th theories we have how 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 do you know like uh, oh the world began that way and this way we don't know it's a theory but it reflects our state of consciousness, the way we see ourselves. And who cares how it started, really? Who cares? But uh, that's our new mythology. If you look at it, really, it's not science, it's mythology. And uh, no matter what time, what age, science is always mythology. Science is always... Um, there was a clever word, es eschatology, eschatological, isn't it? Oh, look up in the dictionary. I don't have a dictionary. Okay, then just use some other word. Well, anyway, it tells you about how the world begins and how it will probably end. Eschatological, I think. So that's science uh, taking uh, up the place of myth. The same as myth, you can't really prove or disprove anything there. It's, again, it's a way of seeing reality, or the way you map it for yourself. If it works, then that's how we as uh, mankind, or um, hair kind, or pet kind, 
Well, that's how we see ourselves anyway. Okay. And the only truth, the only real truth which we can understand, we can get, is our own truth. Well, because it's our own. It's inside us, not outside, so we contain it. So we can uh, get it. Maybe not understand reasonably, logically, but we can know it. That's uh, important. Okay. Whew. That's been. But what do you think? What do you think? Is it all they say? They think we talk too much. Well, you should speak some more then. You should do the talking. They're never happy, you know? Right. Pew, pew, pew! Seek the no learning from the starry man who follow with the optic glass the whirling rays of stars that pass. So he says here, um, again, moving to... He, he talks about scientists and he calls them the starry man. Mm, what an interesting expression. What a very interesting expression. Starry man. So uh, maybe they have stars in their eyes. They're really interested in what they're doing. They're not pretending. That, uh, they, they are uh, honest and sincere in what they are doing. Okay, not always, but uh, should be. They follow with the optic glass. But starry men, again, they belong to the stars. You think, oh, they're so cool. They're like, maybe uh, almost like gods because they're dealing with stars. Oh, uh, well. But starry also means dreamy. Ironic, isn't it? Follow with the optic glass the whirling rays of stars that pass. So again we have the word whirling. We had it before. In dreary dancing past this world, uh, many changing things to the tune that Kronos sings. So they say, you think, okay, maybe stars are eternal. Maybe stars are forever. No, they are subject to Kronos. Just uh, as much as everything else. Stars are things too, even if very big things. So following stars also brings you nowhere. Ah, it's a little bit like with the Krishna guys. Uh, I had a funny book here, someone gave it to me. So what they say here, uh, somewhere, I haven't read it all really, but... Uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, and has some interesting ideas. If you don't take it too seriously. Or if you do. Well, whatever. Excuse me. <clears throat> so what they say. That s some people uh, are interested in earthly things. Like just uh, in their body. Like uh, have some, something nice to eat. Something nice to drink. And have fun. And then they die. They come back as animals on this very planet maybe and uh, some people are uh, get trying to connect with uh, semi-gods or lesser gods whatever they call them and uh, these gods are also mortal so if you connect all your life with the those guys then you die you get reborn uh, as one of them on a happy planet you live a long happy life of, of that god but then you die it's only if you connect to true god in this case krishna uh, only if you connect to true god and you seek to be in true god's or you can say infinity in our context here. Infinity's uh, company. Only then you'll be infinite. And they say very specifically, don't make the mistake. Don't make the mistake. Uh, those lesser gods or semi-gods, whatever. Those lesser gods live a very long life. They live for 
thousands of years, maybe millions of years, but still they think full. Still they die eventually. Like uh, I don't know, Greek gods or Egyptian gods or uh, Norse gods, you know. They might live for a long time, but they die. Same with stars. So uh, the scientists, the starry men, worship stars and they try to follow them because stars seem to be so big, so infinite. But we have this connection between the two parts. And he says, not really. Stars also die. They pass. Stars that pass. Uh, okay guys, let's have a little break. It's been an hour and we've just been through a half of the poem. I don't think we'll need much more time, but I think it's better to have a little break now. Okay? And see you in a minute or two. Stay tuned. <laughs> 